Hey everyone, in today's video, we're learning how to use subflows. The ability to use flows within another flow is one of the most powerful features on Gumloop. It allows you to treat any flow like a node in another flow. So let's take a look at an example. Take a look at this flow here. These nodes are what we call subflows. They're entirely separate flows that combine the power of various other nodes, which are then abstracted into smaller components and used as nodes. So why would you want to use a subflow? Well, there's two main reasons. First off, cleanliness. Breaking up complicated logic into separate functions is a common practice in programming and is just as useful on Gumloop. When automating large tasks, splitting the tasks into smaller components and making these components into subflows helps with the future maintenance of your automations, making it easy to add additional steps or remove unnecessary ones. Second, by creating a subflow that performs one task very well, you achieve the ability to loop this subflow's activity making it easier to test and run the flow. So we've answered the question of why subflows, and now let's answer the how-tos of subflows. Let's say we want to create a flow or an automation that performs some company research on the top 10 AI companies. Let's first break the problem down into smaller components and then start the building problem. The first step would be to read information from a Google Sheet, which would be the URLs of each company. The second step would be the data processing itself, which could include something like extracting relevant data from the company's website, such as the name, mission statement, and so on, summarizing the raw content on the company's homepage, and categorizing the company by industry. And the third and final step would be to perform this data processing on each URL that was read from the sheet. Now that we know the fundamental components that would go into building this flow, we can attempt to create a flow that addresses our problem. So let's start building. The first step is to drag the Google Sheets reader onto the canvas and select the Google Sheet that contains all the URLs. For step two, we want to perform some data processing using the URL of the company website. In the flow, we can add a website scraper to scrape the content from the URL, and extract data node to extract relevant information, a summarizer, and a categorizer. We can now use the website content as the input of each of these nodes, and customize them to perform the relevant data processing. So in the end, our data processor flow looks something like this. Now let's test our data processing using a temporary URL, in our case, Gumloop's homepage. On running the flow, we can see that the data was correctly processed, and we get the relevant extracted information, a summary of the homepage, and the categorization. Now that we know this flow works for a single URL, we can nest or use it in our main flow to automate the process for each company in our Google Sheet. Which brings us to step three. Going back to the main flow, we can now drag in our subflow. We can do this by opening up the subflow library, clicking on data processor, and dragging it to the canvas. But we notice one problem here. This new node has no inputs or outputs. The way to fix this is by going back to the subflow and adding input and output nodes for each item that we want to pass into the subflow and get out of the subflow. In this case, we only want to input the company URLs, so we'd have a single input node for the company URL. For the outputs, we'd have two for the extracted data, one for the summary, and one for the categorization. Doing this, we can now see that the subflow is updated with the input and output handles. And so now we can use it as intended. Let's drag the output of the Google Sheet reader into the data processor subflow. Since we have a list of URLs, loop mode is automatically turned on. Finally, we can take the outputs of the subflow and combine the raw information into a more structured format. So subflows are immensely powerful. They abstract incredibly complex logic behind a simple user-facing node on Gumloop. 
You can have an unlimited amount of subflows within a flow, and you can even have subflows within subflows. Most advanced flows on Gumloop make use of subflows, such as this one, which generates entire blog posts through a single YouTube video link. One last thing, let's say you created this flow, and after learning the benefits of subflows and abstraction, want to break it down into subflows. You don't actually have to copy the subflow and make various changes to it. You can just select the nodes as you'd like using the pointer cursor and click on the make subflow button, which creates a subflow exactly as intended.